first gift I ever got from my now mother-in-law came when Lee and I were still dating in college. It was a care package addressed to both of us, and inside was a Playboy magazine for him, a Playgirl magazine for me, and a little package of chocolate-covered nuts, because I guess it's good to share a snack when you're flipping through your sophomore porn. I'm from the Midwest, from a really conservative family in the Midwest. Like, when that second story happened, I was dying inside. Like, 50% Swiss, 50% Norwegian, and 100% uptight. We don't talk about magazines in my house. So this was an unexpected gift from my boyfriend's mom. And also, it was a little bit foreshadowing. So a couple years later, she hosts an engagement party for us, and all of the extended family in Long Island come together to celebrate. They all brought gifts. Most of the gifts were things that, as a Midwesterner, I expected to see, linens, wine glasses, whatever. The last package put in front of us came again from Lee's mom, and I could tell before I even opened it from the shape that it was a VHS videotape because that's how old I am. Um, and I'll, at the time, I'm not thinking magazines. I'm just thinking, huh, I do not remember putting a videotape on the registry. But whatever. So I unwrap the tape, and all of these soon-to-be in-laws are looking at me, and they say, what did you get? And I say, I got the Better Sex Video Series. <laughs> so this was something that was put out in the 80s and 90s, and it was like an instructional video, like a step-by-step -step demonstration of how to have better sex. So like, if you watched This Old House, it'd be Bob Vila showing how to like, nail together a bookcase. And this was like, not Bob Vila showing you how to, like, you, told, you get the picture, but I, again, dying a thousand deaths. I'm like 90 shades of tomato red because to put this conservative Midwest family thing in context, we didn't even use the word fart at my house growing up. Like That was too personal. That was too bodily. If you had to describe that thing that happened to only other people and never us, you would say foofer. <laughs> mother-in-law-to-be makes it just the teeniest bit worse because she says oh I hope you like that we got the first one but it was really basic so we thought you might like that one and I realized what I'm holding is actually better sex volume 2 colon advanced sexual techniques so, like and an advanced level of mortified and also a tiny bit flatter. Um, but I also am feeling so much pressure because I am at this point in time the only Midwesterner any of these people have ever met in real life and I know whatever I say will be forever burned in their minds as the voice of all of non-New York America, like all of Wayne, all blonde people, whatever. And I don't want them to think that we're all a bunch of prudes, even though I really pretty much am. So I say something, like try to pass it off, like I'm kind of cool, like, yeah, we get naked stuff in our Christmas stockings all the time, whatever. And I'm looking around because I want this moment to end. I just want this whole moment to end. I'm thinking maybe there's another gift to open, like a cookbook or a melon baller. Oh my god, not a melon baller. That sounds so kinky. It can't be a melon baller. So anyway, so I just want it to be over. Plus, I think there's cake, and I'm putting the tape away. And at that point, I notice one more thing about it, which is that the tape is stopped in the middle. Like someone has watched halfway through, given up, and not rewound. Now, I will tell you one more time, I am from a conservative Midwestern family, and we rewind. <laughs> and B, like, we're not going to give the gift of a video that shows you how to give a 
blowjob in a hot tub without drowning, but if we did give that gift, we wouldn't use it first because that is just rude. So, I have kind, of kind of a three bears moment where I say, huh, somebody's been watching my sex video. And the whole room pauses for a minute and people kind of look back and forth like it's murder on the Long Island Express or something. And then, as one, the group turns, and it turns its attention away from me, which is all I ever wanted. <laughs> and looks at Lee's teenage brother, who is sitting on the couch, who's been living in the basement, who is shrinking 90 shades of tomato, like he just foofered in front of a whole congregation of Norwegians, and he is busted, and I am off the hook. <laughs>